Hello, mutants. I'm Utisha, the movie goddess, and you're watching Mutant TV. What's up, MVP? Strebo here with you. Uh, we are continuing the Halloween adventures of MVP. Today, I'm taking you out to Retro Phantasma, where they are having, uh, where they're playing uh, Last House on the Left in 35 millimeter. This is a uh, part of our little tribute to David Hess. Speaking of which, to get myself ready for this this uh, show tonight, I listened to Exploited Cinema's latest episode, episode 25, where they talked about David Hess, which is pretty pretty sweet. So. Say anybody wanting to check out a proper tribute to Hess would uh, do well, do a lot worse than to, than to listen to their show. I actually learned that Hess was quite, a, quite an accomplished musician, which I knew, but I did not know that he had written All Shook Up for Elvis. I mean, so he was uh, he was operating at quite a level. Now, it's interesting to find myself coming out to see Last House on the Left because the rape revenge subgenre of horror or the exploitation subgenre or facet of horror is probably my least favorite out of everything. I'm more of a, a fantasy buff, so to speak. <clears throat> but, uh, so it's interesting. Some people, like they even mentioned it on, uh, on Exploited Cinema, they mentioned that these rape revenge films aren't even necessarily um, horror films, so to speak. Um, they just kind of, in in my own, you know, horror theories and whatnot, I see exploitation as a facet of horror, much like fantasy and reality, things that can be twisted and made fearful. Um, and Last House on the Left, like House on the Edge of the Park and Hitchhike, um, they exploit those elements of, uh, you know, rape, revenge, fantasy, so to speak. Um, not a huge fan of the genre, but I will, I will stick up for it in saying that um, there's a lot going on in Craven's film, Last House on the Left. The character of Krug, played by David Hess, for which he has become immortal, um, he's very much like Goya's Saturn devouring his son come to life. It's like if, yeah, Goya's Saturn, yeah, just devouring everything around him, and uh, that character is kind of let loose in uh, Last House on the Left, and, and it's captured, you know, almost cinema verite documentary style, which was a, almost a technical snafu on the part of Wes Craven and the guys, because they didn't actually know how to shoot a film at the time, so uh, they just kind of shot everything in master shots, wide shots, and then when they got back to the editing room, they had a hard time cutting it all together, because it didn't cut together like a proper movie. So, anyway, not a huge fan of the genre, but I do want to pay tribute to a guy that was an awesome actor, an amazing presence on screen, helped, you know, his performance is what put Last House on the Left over the top, and uh, it basically jump-started the entire rape revenge subgenre in the 70s, so uh, here to pay tribute to that man, a man who's also an amazing musician, uh, a skilled martial artist, so he knew, he knew how to fight, how to get down, how to take care of himself, you know, and he transferred that over to the... Uh, sleazy desires of the characters that he played whether it was Krug or Alex or what have you so I'm gonna check the film out see what I think about it see what the movie teaches me about myself about the audience about horror in general because this is the real litmus test watching a film 35 millimeter at the theater um, I'm like a true horror geek I'm gonna jump on it rip it apart try to swallow its essence, swallow its soul, learn about it, come out the other side like a shaman of horror and uh, see what we find out about it. Or that all could just be bullshit, but let's go see the movie, see what happens. It rests on 13 acres of earth over the very center of hell. Here is the first motion picture to offer to the daring a look 
into the final maddening space between life and death. The last house on the left. To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It's only a movie. Only a movie. Only a movie. Sights and sounds far beyond anything you've tested. The last house on the left. To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It's only a movie. Only a movie. Only a movie. Take as only much as you can. Only a movie. So I've just sat through 35 millimeter screening of Last House on the Left. Very interesting, very, very interesting, very intense film. Um, the audience seemed to be really, really into it. Uh, it still carries on kind of a raw, rough power even today. Uh, it came out in what, 74 and this is 2011, so it's almost, yeah, wow. Almost 40 years later. Um, it's interesting to see how the Keystone Cop stuff plays out. By the way, if you're uh, if you've never seen the movie, yeah, this will be spoilery stuff. But if you have, then uh, stick around. It's, it's interesting how the bumbling sheriff stuff plays out. Uh, I definitely felt like it was very much kind of a needed tension reliever for the audience um, to kind of give them a break from all the brutal scenes because there's a lot of brutality. You know, the, the rape and mutilation of uh, Mary and her friend. Um, so it's very interesting. You know, the movie stands up. I guess, you know, David David Hess's masterpiece, his sleaster piece, <laughs> so to speak. Um, it's very brutal, very powerful, very raw individual. But it's so strange. He must have been such a dichotomy of an individual. He's, a, he's an amazing actor because you believe that he's, he's this total sleazeball crew that'll do anything that he wants at any time without warning to anyone. But then, uh, you know, in knowing of David Hess as the individual, we know that he wrote and composed and sung and performed the music for the movie itself. And, you know, and this is this kind of strange kind of folk music. And uh, that one song, The Road Leads to Nowhere, um, which I might put at the end of this video, I don't know. Um, it's very interesting because it's very haunting, very, very haunting. But, yeah, I think it was a fitting tribute, uh, very serendipitous that uh, that the Carolina Theater had this programmed already, um, apparently planned for months, and then David Hess's passing was just kind of an unfortunate coincidence. So, you know, I thought I had to come out and see what was going on and uh, kind of pay my respects to the Sleaze King. And uh, I'm glad I did. So, powerful movie. All right, guys, this is Old Strebo with you, signing off from the site of the Carolina Theater in Durham. Uh, we've just come out of screening of Last House on the Left. I had to go ahead and leave. They're about to screen Cannibal Apocalypse, starring John Saxon and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, had a good time watching the movie and uh, just kind of thinking about the whole kind of grindhouse exploitation, rape revenge, you know, brutal subgenre as it is. You know, David Hess's place in it as uh, Krug, you know, the immortal Krug, the man in black, the man that'll do anything to anyone. Very interesting, very dark and sinister figure. He gives that movie a lot of its a lot of its power because you can tell the way that he throws his weight around that uh, you know he's just used to taking care of business and handling people men women whatever and it's kind of a creepy if you watch all of his movies it's almost like an encyclopedia of how to be a, a sleaze king <laughs> I mean the way he handles people and you know grabs men and women by their hair and throws them around and it's all kinds of stuff so very fitting tribute to mr. David Hess I must say I never thought I'd be out, uh, you know, going to some kind of tribute for Mr. Hess, but, uh, you know, he was certainly an underrated actor, unfairly typecast, no doubt, and an extremely talented musician. His uh, music's very, very interesting. And like I said, a few of the pieces in Last House of the Left I thought were actually very haunting. So, old Strebo made out like a bandit. Check it out. 
I scored some uh, card packs, sticker packs from the raffle and giveaway. Jim says since they were having such a sleazy show tonight, they give away, have some sleazy prizes. Pro cheerleaders, read them in wheat boys. <laughs> Swimsuit illustrated. <laughs> Very funny. I also, uh, what else did I get here? Uh-oh. Got the, uh, the program for this year. Carolina Theater, you see Ghost Ship on there. Believe it or not, they are programming an American Werewolf in London come December. Very awesome. And uh, I scored a couple DVDs in the lobby from Melissa at Alternative Exchange. Thanks, Melissa. Leatherface 3 and uh, the sleaziest space fest of all time, Ice Pirates. <laughs> so, yeah, old Strebo made out well like a true sleaze bandit. Here at uh, this tribute to the Sleaze King, David Hess. What have I learned from it? I've learned that uh, people do mean things to each other. They do brutal things, callous things. But uh, at the end, I guess, uh, it's all part of human nature. It's all part of human nature. No matter what we try, where we try to go to get away from it all, start new societies, civilizations, whatever, there's always going to be somebody that brings that side back to us and uh, reminds us of it violently. So, anyway, it's Halloween. MVP, Strebo here with you all month long. We're one week away from the release of our interview with John Carpenter and also the exclusive cast and crew screening of Ghost. Good times ahead. We'll be back on the set of Athena. Robert W. Fillion's Athena tomorrow with Matthew Ewald and uh, Vanell. So, yeah, good times. Happy Halloween, everybody. This is Strebo. David Hess, rest in peace. You are watching Mutant TV.